Welcome. This is a video tutorial on using Midjourney. Keep watching because I'm going to share advanced tips throughout the video so you can have the best experience possible when creating images in Midjourney. To get started, head to midjourney.com. At the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see join the beta. Click on it and on the next page, you'll be invited to join their Discord server, which is where you'll be creating images. Click accept invite. If you don't have a Discord account, you'll want to create one. It's free and make sure you verify your email after cre account creation before repeating the steps I mentioned earlier. After accepting, you'll be brought to Discord's main page. On the left are servers. Click on the mid-journey icon on the left column. Once you do, Discord will update with all of these sections on the left. These are channels and topics up within mid-journey. They are broken down by general information, support, newcomer rooms, and other chat rooms where you can interact with others. Once you've logged in successfully, you can now sign up for Midjourney's paid plan. While navigating the server and viewing images creators have made is completely free, in order to create images yourself, a subscription is required. To subscribe, start by going back to Midjourney's website and click and in the bottom right hand corner, clicking on sign in. You can do so with your existing Discord account. Once you're logged in at the very bottom, click on your name and click manage subscription. You'll be able to sign up for a plan or adjust plans based on your needs. You can always come back and upgrade or downgrade your plan as needed. There are also sections here where your created images will be organized along with other images from creators that you follow. And there's also the explore tab, which are just users posting images that are being categorized within this website. After selecting your plan and subscribing, head back to the Midjourney Discord server and click on one of the newbie channels. Here you'll see images being created and posted real time by other users, along with the prompts that they are using in order to get these types of images. To get started in the text box at the bottom of the page, type in forward slash imagine and then hit enter. You'll then see a box pop up where you can put in your prompt at the bottom of the page. But before you do that, I want to share my first advanced tip. Instead, type in forward slash settings and hit enter twice. You'll see Midjourney pulls up the settings pane. In order to select the latest version, which has the making of this video is version 6 alpha, you'll want to select it within options. This would be the same process when Midjourney updates to newer versions in the future. You can also make other necessary adjustments to craft the image that you want, such as being stylized very high, adding a remix mode, uh, low variation, and relax mode if you have one of the higher paid tiers. Going back to the text box, I'm gonna hit forward slash imagine, and I put in my prompt. All you have to do is hit enter. It will take a few minutes to start rendering, but you'll see what you've created highlighted in yellow. Once it's finished, it will give the appearance that it has disappeared from the page, you can scroll down and you can find it because what Midjourney does is it finalizes created images in chronological order based on when a user puts in their prompt. But here's a tip. Up at the very top, there is an inbox button. If you click on it and you click on mentions, you'll see the most recent images that you've created. All you need to do is click on the jump button right here and it'll immediately jump to your most recently created images. I'm going to show you how to further refine images, but before I do that, I want to share with my second advanced tip if you're struggling to create a prompt for your image. A good text prompt should consist of six components. The style, which is which would be, for example, cinematic or anime. The shot, whether it's close up or far away. The subject, describe what the character is in the, in the image the action, whether that subject is running or jumping, the setting, where is this actually taking place, and the lighting, is it happening at day, is it happening at night, is it studio lighting, etc. Those six components will help you craft a really great image in Midjourney. Even after the, that example, if you're still struggling with a prompt, you could search through Midjourney's Discord server using keywords for the type of image you want to create but that's much too time consuming. Here's my third advanced tip to find great prompts based on criteria I outlined previously. Navigate to lexica.art, which is a search engine for images being created using text prompts. You'll see here there's thousands of different images that are coming up and these are the most recent ones. 
if you wanted to look for a prompt that was similar to what you wanted to create and you weren't really sure, as long as you have some basic keywords to start, you can find pretty much any prompt you're looking for. After putting in your keywords, you can scroll through certain images, click on them, and you'll see the prompt right here. You can copy the prompt, bring it back to mid-journey, further refine it to your liking and adjust the prompt just the way that you want it, and then you can continue forward. Now back to refining images. If you click on the image, it'll make it larger. And if there's one specific image that you want to make bigger, there's a couple of ways you could tackle this. Midjourney creates four images at a time and splits them into four quadrants. If, for example, I wanted to further enhance the third image, what I would do is I would click on U3. U stands for upscale. So for the first image, U1, U2, etc. If I wanted to redo the images and do another variation of the image, let's say I specifically wanted to do a variation of the second image, I would then click V2, which stands for variation and so forth. And then if I just wanted Midjourney to just refresh the image as it is, then I would click the refresh button here. I really like image three, so I went with that for upscaling. Once you make your selection, what'll happen is Midjourney will start the process of making it larger. But I do want to call out, you will have to scroll down again because it's putting the creation in order with other user requests. As I mentioned before, you can go back to the inbox button and then just click on your most recent image when it's done and just jump directly to it. So here's the finished image from the third quadrant. It can be further refined by upscaling even further. I can change the variation to make it more subtle or to make it much stronger. So that's a variation of the image. Varying region gives me the ability to only change a specific portion of the image that I wanted to enhance. So for example, if I wanted to focus the, the imagery behind this person, then I could actually vary the region of that particular part of the image. With the arrows, this is panning and selecting a certain arrow will pan down. And then if I want to favorite it, I can favorite it and I, I can click on it and it'll open it up in another tab. For this example, I clicked on uh, panning down. And what you'll see when Midjourney is finished is the panning feature created a much larger image which incorporated the person's entire body rather than just having a close-up. But if you wanted to save an image, you could click on the browser. It'll open it up in a browser. You just simply hit right-click and then save image as, and it saves it to your desktop. But what if you wanted to keep your creations private? Here's my fourth advanced tip. On the left-hand side, there's a plus tab. Click on it and select create my own server. It'll ask you some subsequent questions on how you want the server to be built. Go through that, add a photo if you wish, name it, and then hit create. Once you've created your own personal server, go back to Midjourney's page. But this time on the right, you'll see here there's, there's a Midjourney bot. Click on it and click add app. What you'll then be prompted to do is select your specific server. You hit continue, you select authorize and then the bot will be added to your own personal Discord server. Now, if you click on your server, you'll see at the bottom, the Midjourney bot is already initiated. And if I wanted to then start creating images, I could of course do that, enter in my prompt, and here it's on my own private server. Private creations will not be visible to other users. They will be visible to people who follow your Discord server. I'm gonna show you how to use prompts in Midjourney. These will range from beginner to advanced. Keep watching because I'll reveal bonus tips later on in the video. Tip one is to adjust your settings before you start creating images. You can do this by hitting the slash button, typing in settings, and hitting enter twice. Doing this will give you the opportunity to set your default parameters when creating an image. This is where you can change Midjourney from its default version, which is version 5.2, to version 6, which is the latest version as of this video. If you want me to make an explainer video all about Midjourney settings, let me know in the comments. To get started creating images, the magic starts by hitting the slash button, typing in imagine. Here you can, you'll see you can start writing your prompt. Tip two is you can start creating prompts in as little as writing just only one word, which would then give Midjourney creative license to interpret that prompt any way it wishes. I'm gonna start with confidence and hit enter. Here's what Midjourney returned. Midjourney will always output images into four quadrants. The row on the top, which is the use, stands for upscale. So for example, if you really liked 
image number two and you wanted Midjourney to then upscale that image so that you could download it and save it, you would click U2. But let's say you didn't want to download the image and you wanted a variation of the same image. You liked image number two and you wanted Midjourney to recreate four new images that are very similar to image number two, you would then click V2 and so on and so forth for the other images. This button here with the circular image is the reroll button. This button gives Midjourney the opportunity to recreate the prompt that you just put in. Prompts can continue to be built by adding more words separated by a comma. You want to avoid punctuation when creating prompts because as of the making of this video, Midjourney currently does not recognize punctuation such as exclamation marks. Tip three is changing the aspect ratio. How you would do this is adding a dash dash AR, hitting the space bar, and then for 16 by 9, which is for YouTube videos or TVs, you would then type in 16 by 9. Midjourney recognizes dash dash commands as parameters, and I'm going to share more parameters with you over the course of this video. For TikTok videos, Instagram reels, and for YouTube shorts, you would do the reverse. You would do it, uh, the aspect ratio 9 by 16. Tip four is the parameter known as stylize, which for mid-journey you would type that in as dash dash s and then a space, followed by a number anywhere between zero and a thousand. A lower number will keep your image closest to the prompt, whereas a higher number will have much more style but adhere less to what your original prompt was. Here I have an example of 80s cat inspired flying on a spaceship through the galaxy and I kept the stylized as zero and you can see that. I did the exact same prompt except the difference was here I put the style as being 800 and you can see Mid Journey just completely takes it and just runs with it and creates something drastically different than originally intended. Tip five is the parameter for quality, also known as dash dash Q. And adjustments can be made from 0.5 all the way up to one. Quality, I would type in Roman Gladiator. See what we get with that. Dash dash Q space 0.25. Here's what Midjourney returned. Let's do the same thing with one. And here's what Midjourney returned. Tip six is the parameter chaos, which is a, a dash dash C followed by the space bar, and it goes from a number of zero to 100. The higher the number, the more varied the images will look to the original prompt, and the lower, of course, the more it'll adhere to the original prompt. So I'm gonna do first uh, dash dash zero for a basketball player's running down the court. Here's what Midjourney retur uh, returned. And then let's do another example, which is all the way at 100. And here's what Midjourney returned. So drastically different than what initially what was shown when it was more closer to the original prompt. Later in the video, in addition to the bonus tips that I'm gonna share with you, I'm also gonna share a resource, so stay tuned for that. Next is uh, tip number seven, which is the tile parameter, which is dash dash tile. It gives you the, be the ability to create seamless patterns in that can be used in art or in clothing or other areas where maybe you might be selling a product and you want to create a, a consistent pattern. Currently, it doesn't work in version six yet. You do have to default to version 5.2. In order to get back to version 5.2, just follow the steps that I talked about at the beginning of the video, which showed you how to get back to settings so you can make those changes. But let's show an example. So here I'm gonna do 90s space dash dash tile. Here we go, and this is the image that Midjourney put out. I like this one on the top right, so I'm gonna go ahead and upscale it, and here we go. You can also use an online texture checker to validate whether or not the pattern is complete completely seamless and I'll show you that. I'll put a link to this website in the description as well, but you can see here as I zoom out and as I zoom completely in, the pattern is completely seamless. Tip eight is adding in a colon in between two words. What this will do is this will tell Midjourney that within the prompt that you're creating to treat the words as two separate things within the same prompt. I'll show you what I mean. So first, let's create an image of a bulldog. Here's what Midjourney put out. Now to add the colon, we're gonna go back to creating a prompt. And this time we're gonna type the word bull. We're gonna input two columns, hitting a space, followed by the word dog, and then we're gonna hit enter. So as you can see here, now Midjourney has actually incorporated images of a dog and a bull together, rather than just keeping it one straightforward uh, term. Tip number nine is the seed parameter. You'll still wanna stick with version 5.2 for this one. Seeding gives you 
you the ability to create a new set of images based off of an original image set of images that you've already created. So for example, if we take the bulldog one, let's say we really love this one and we want to keep it, but we want to create a new prompt and we want to use this same style. What you would do is you would go up here to the add reaction button, click on it. You may not see the envelope right away, but if you search for it, you want to click on the envelope button. What this will do is this will initiate the mid journey bot to send you a direct message on Discord. And you'll see it's come up right here. Click on it. You'll then see here we have the seed number. With the seed number, what we can do is we can create a new prompt and then add in the seed number so it keeps us the same parameters. And then to keep it, we would type in dash dash seed space followed by the seed number. Tip 10 is the blend feature. So you can start by typing in uh, forward backslash blend. Midjourney will prompt you to add images. You can add up to five images. What this will do is this will blend all of the images together. So I'm gonna take an image of my own. This is an AI image that I had created. And then I'm also gonna take another image, which is Midjourney's interpretation of James Bond. And this is the image here, and I'm gonna blend these two together. So you simply upload the images from your computer, and then you hit enter. If you wanted to add more images, you would simply click on where you see at the bottom right hand corner, it says plus four more. You could then add, uh, you could change the dimensions if you wanted. You could also then click on it and add additional images if you wish. So let's see what happens. Here we go. Not quite the same thing, but you can see it's a work in progress. I'm going to share those bonus tips in a moment, but first I want to tell you about that resource that I was talking about, which will help you remember prompts. So you can always have the information right at your fingertips. It's a website called Prompt Folder, and they do have a section here, which, which is a mid-journey prompt generator. There's two ways you could approach this. You could start by typing in your main idea. I'm simply typing. I don't need to know any of the mid-journey commands. I don't need to type in slash image to get started. I'm just simply typing in my idea and this website will automatically give you the prompt that you want. You simply copy it, you go back to mid-journey, you paste it, and then it'll create the prompt. But the beauty of this website is you have the, mo the most of the major parameters. If I then wanted to change this prompt that I'm creating and I wanted to add in a 16 by 9 ash aspect ratio. I wanted to make sure that it was locked into version 6. I wanted the quality to be a 1, stylizing and so on. You can even go as far as to select the specific style you want. So if you wanted it to be a cartoon, I would click continue here. If I wanted a specific kind of lighting, if I wanted the camera angle, if I wanted to add in certain colors, so on and so forth. So you can see how large this prompt has now become. All I have to do, click copy prompt, go back to mid journey, hit paste, and, and I can immediately start having mid journey generate the prompt. The bonus tip that I want to share with you is something called prompt stacking. I've upscaled one of the James Bond images that Midjourney initially created before I did the blending. If you click on the image and you see here where you go to open in web browser, right click and copy link address. You can then go down to Midjourney, type it imagine to start the prompt, paste the link of the image, and then start adding in additional words to further enhance the image that you had initially created. So I'll show you an example. So we'll go here, desert, sun, shining. Let's see what happens. Here's what Midjourney put out. Not quite what I was expecting, but you get the idea. You could continue just right clicking, copying the address, adding in more words to the prompt. This process of prop stacking can be repeated indefinitely. You can just keep copying the link address, putting it in, adding in what you want to add into the prompt, generating it, copying the link address again, and going so on and so forth. It's a really useful way of taking what you've been creating, stacking it, and then adding on to it to further enhance your image creation. Another bonus tip is you can take an image, and it can be any image you want it to be. It can be one you've either created in Midjourney, it can be a personal photo of your own, and you can ask Midjourney to describe it. So you can do that by hitting uh, forward slash describe. Midjourney Journey will then prompt you to upload an image. So I'm going to use the same image that I showed earlier of me before I did the blend. And then all you have to do is hit enter. Here's what Midjourney put out. So you can see here it gives up to four different uh, descriptions. You can even take these descriptions and use them as prompts and then further refine them and tweak them to your liking. It's a great way of, if you're finding that maybe you've got a bit of writer's block, take an image that you really like, upload it, ask it to describe it, and then you can take the prompts and you can tweak them as you wish. If right now, I'm going to show you how to create characters consistently in Midjourney. You'll be able to create characters that can be used for social media, storytelling, comic books, or anything else that you can think of. The first step is to generate a series of reference images that Midjourney can use later so they can be put into different scenes. Ideally two to five reference images. To 
to get started, I have a prompt already made and I'm going to use that, but feel free to take this prompt and tweak it to what works best for you. Once images are created, you'll have to play around with the prompt to get it to your liking. As you can see here, I've created a bunch of different reference images. I'm going to go with this one because it has three clear angles to work with. But if you wanted to generate even more images that are, that are very closely representative of the newly created avatar you just made, you would click here very strong. And as you can see, it creates a number of different images that are very closely representative of what was just created. Next, you wanna crop out each angle into individual photos. Most computers and cell phones have built-in cropping tools to help with this. I'm using the one that's built into my computer. If you don't have access to one, you could also do an internet search for an online cropping tool and that can get you started. When finish cropping, click the plus button at the bottom to upload your images to Midjourney. After uploading to Midjourney, go into each individual image and you'll want to copy the link address. Do this for each one and paste it into Discord's text box at the bottom. You can separate each link by holding down shift on your keyboard and clicking enter and then pasting the next URL. Select all of the URLs, copy them, delete. While in the text box, type in slash prefer. You want to go with prefer option set. In the option, you want to type in the name of your character. For me, I'm going to call it Mia. Beside the name, you're going to click on plus one more. You're going to click on value. And here is where you will post your URLs. What this does is this tells Midjourney to save Mia as the consistent character. Let's create a new image. Here's the newly created image. It won't look like your character just yet. Here's what to do in order to ensure that your consistent character is in the image that you create. I'm going to upscale the first one, and then I'm going to click on very region. If you don't see the very region button here, here's how to enable it. Go to Discord's text box at the bottom, type in slash settings, hit enter twice, and make sure the remix mode button is enabled. Once you've done that, refresh, create a new image, and you'll see the very region button available to you to use. In order to get my consistent character into this image, I'm going to click on the lasso tool, and then I'm going to trace around her head, and then I'm going to type in dash dash Mia. When creating prompts in Midjourney, Midjourney uses dash dashes as parameters in order to fine tune an image. Now I'm going to hit enter. And here we go. So I'll show you what the results are. You can see compared to the character that was created, move this one over here so you can get a glimpse at all four of them. Midjourney does a great job of inputting your character. But what if you wanted to create different facial expressions or different outfits or different settings? You can go back to the original image before you put in your character, click on very region. And now, instead of being in a black dress, I've rewritten the prompt to add in emotions, such as being her happy. I'm going to change the outfit to being jeans and a t-shirt, and the streets are going to be of London instead of Paris. And show you a few more examples of inputting the, the consistent character into a number of different scenes. Here's another example. This time the character is walking through a forest. Here's another one using the same character, which is a surprise look sitting at an office desk. Here's another set of images with the same character sitting at a coffee shop with a more calm look. You can create an infinite amount of images and add in your newly created character to all of them. Right now, I'm going to show you how to create logos in Midjourney. You can create logos like this and this and this. Keep watching because I'll share tips throughout the video so you can create the best logos possible. You can do a Google search to seek out what are the best logo styles. I'm going to show you an example here. Type in different logo styles. Here's a page that I'll link to in the description. It's a great resource that breaks down all of the different types of logo styles. So you can see here they've got word mark, letter form, abstract. It'll show you all of the different styles and what common logos are you can just find out in the world. And then you can use these as templates to specifically craft a logo. So let's start by creating a logo for a fictional soccer team called the Lions Soccer Club. If you want Midjourney to recognize text, you can put it in quotation marks and that'll help your prompt. Here's the result. This is using Midjourney 5.2, which is known not to do a good job with text. While the text is clear, you can see that it doesn't even come close to what it is that I had asked. Let's use the same prompt and switch over to Midjourney version 6, which is known to do a lot better with text. Well, here's what Midjourney version 6 puts out. A lot better, a lot more legible, although it missed the word line. If you stay tuned, uh, later on in the video, I'm going to show you a tip on how you can, can take the text from a logo that you've created and change it so you can correct it and make it exactly to your liking. But overall, I'm satisfied with this. It captured the line, it captured the word soccer club. So if you're creating a logo and you're going to have text in it, you might want to consider using Midjourney version 6. Next, I'm going to create an emblem logo of an F1 
racing team. Overall a great result. I really like the third one in the bottom left hand corner. Great styling and if you wanted to generate more variations of an image if you were to click on V3 this will initiate Midjourney to create four new images modeling after the third variation. Another thing that Midjourney can do with logos is you can tell Midjourney to create a logo in the style of something. Let's look up famous logo designers. Here's a website that I'll link in the description but this website has the 20 most famous logo designers and their iconic work over the years. So as you scroll through them, you can see here, here's Paul Rand. He's responsible for IBM, UPS, and Ford. If you go to Peter Seville, you've got Burberry. You've got uh, Massimo Vanelli, who's done American Airlines, and you know, so on and so forth. Let's create an image in the style of Massimo Vanelli, and we're gonna create the image for a computer microchip company, and let's see what it comes up with. And here's the result, minimalist, flat, but stands out, sharp detailing. Overall, I really like the simplicity and how bold these images look using the style of Massimo Vanelli in order to get the desired result. And Midjourney can also do images of 3D characters. So I'll show you an example of this. Tell it to create a 3D logo of an iPad app that teaches kids how to draw. And here we go, really stylized, very, very cute. And it's something that you could use for anything that you can create. Midjourney does a really great job of 3D rendering, especially when it comes to just icons. But what happens if you loved one of these images and you wanted to remove the background? Here's my next tip. You can simply type in background image remover online. There's a number of these here that do give you options for free, but they're limited until they put you on pricing. I prefer to use Adobe's background remover because all you have to do is just create an account, which is completely free. You don't have to pay for this at all. Adobe will automatically remove the background. After you're logged in, you hit download. You have your logo with the background removed. So let's say you created a logo and you really liked one, but the text is completely off and you want text in your logo. What do you do? What I'm going to show you now is another tip, which I want to give credit to Matt Wolf. He did this in another video that he had made. It's using Canva, which is completely free to make changes to the logo so that you can put the text that you want and you can correct it accordingly. I'm going to show you that right now. So when you get to Canva, you can log in with your Google account or you can create an account completely for free. I'm going to go here to create design. I'm going to upload my image. I'm just going to click on use in design, go to custom design, create new design. What I can do is I can click on the image, I can go over to text, and I'm going to go with a text that I feel is similar to the one here. I'll go to this one, I will lay it on top. If I want to ensure that the color scheme is followed the exact same way, all I need to do is I need to highlight the text that I want to make changes to, click on the color, click on the plus sign, and then use the eyedropper tool here. And then I'm just going to hover over color of the text in the initial logo and you'll see it automatically updates. Next, we're gonna go to elements. We're gonna go to a rectangle. We're gonna bring it in. We're gonna change the color to black. And then here, we're just going to simply resize it. And you may have to play around with this as you go. So now I've completely removed the text that it doesn't make sense. Here, I will edit it, be what I need it to be. And here we go, I have my completed logo. The additional text has been removed. I've added in my own text, which is similar. I've added the same colors. It's one way that you can change text in logos completely for free, just creating an account with Canva. I'm gonna show you how to create coloring pages in Midjourney. So you can put together your own coloring books for Amazon KDP, Etsy, or any other publishing platform. You can use these coloring pages to create coloring books for your kids, or you can just print them out and develop ones for yourself as an adult coloring book. Keep watching because later on in the video, I'll show you how to take these coloring pages from Midjourney and create a coloring book of your own. Here's a few examples of coloring pages that I've been experimenting with, and I've tried a few different prompts. I'll show you some of those examples here. There's this one, another one is that one. This one's a good one, and so is this one. But what I found works best is telling Midjourney in the prompt to make a cartoon style coloring page and adding in terms such as black and white or line art. That's what works best. Even after that, if you're stuck trying to create coloring book prompts, I'll put examples of the prompts that I've been using in the description below. But I also want to show you a free resource that I found online, which I'll also link in the description. This resource gives you 50 mid-journey prompts that you can use for coloring pages. And as I go through them, you can see they have prompts for people, superheroes, animals, patterns, and anime as well. And you can take these prompts, you can modify them to your liking in terms of what works best for you. And you can use these prompts to start creating coloring pages in Midjourney. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a mandala art coloring book in this example, because they are some of the most popular coloring books that you can get for adults. 
and there's a lot of different options here that are being sold online at various marketplaces. So in Midjourney, you would start by typing in the, the prompt backslash imagine. I'm gonna type in Mandela style coloring page, black and white, line art. What Midjourney has created here is great, but if you weren't satisfied, you could also adjust the prompt, play around with it until you get it to your liking. I'm gonna click on use one through four and go ahead and upscale each image and download them. Now that I've upscaled all of my images, I've downloaded them, they're ready to go. I'm gonna head over to Canva now to start creating the coloring book. Once you're at Canva, go ahead and create an account. It's completely free. In the top right corner, we're gonna click on create design. You can search for coloring book and you can actually go ahead and use the default figures that Canva gives you, but you can also go down to the bottom and, and click on custom size. So typically standard coloring book is about eight by 11 inches. So that's what I'm gonna type in. And I'm gonna go ahead and click create new design. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start importing my images. With my images imported, I'm now gonna start just resizing them to make them fit the page a little bit better. And I'm gonna put a border around them so they look a little bit cleaner. As I'm doing this and I'm scrolling through, you'll notice that I have blank pages in between as I'm going ahead and I'm resizing. The reason for this is in Amazon KDP, it's been acknowledged that when you're creating a coloring book and it's going for print, sometimes the ink can actually bleed through the pages. So for most creators creating coloring books, it's recommended to keep a blank page in between. This way it helps minimize ink bleed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish adjusting this and adding the borders and I'll, and I'll get back. I've gone ahead, I've edited my photos, I've put a border around them. Of course for you, you would have to decide what the best dimensions are and how you would like to lay it out and space it out. But this is finished, it's ready to go and now all we have to do is download it. So I'm going to go to file. I'm gonna go to download. It's recommended that the file type be changed to PDF print. When it comes to the color profile, it depends on what you're using the coloring book for. If you're gonna sell it purely digitally, RBG would be recommended. For CMYK, which is the best for paper printing, Canva does require a pro subscription, but you can sign up for a free trial and then cancel at any time. So now that we've gone ahead and we're downloading our coloring book pages, next we need to create the cover. I wanna give credit to Danny On Demand who showed how to size the cover page and edit it in Canva in a video he made. Amazon KDP has a book cover calculator that you can use to determine how large your cover should be. You are required to fill out some basic information, but once you do that, the Amazon book cover calculator will give you an estimation on what your cover should be in width and in height. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the default options here and I'll get back to you. Much in the same way, we would just go back to create new design. I'm gonna change the format to inches and I'm putting in what Amazon KDP's book cover calculator recommended. Once you have your cover page front and back ready to go, you can go back to mid Midjourney and you can have Midjourney create a color version of the coloring page that you're working on. I've already done this and I'm going to upscale this so I could use it for as my cover page. All that's required is just clicking in and dragging the image and I'm now going to just start spacing it out. You'll have to adjust the image in order to make sure that it's completely on the cover. In order to get the exact color of the back image, which is matching the front image, what you want to do is you want to highlight the entire page and you can see here it's highlighted in purple. You would click on this background color button then you would click on the plus sign and then you would click on the eyedropper and then you would just hover over the color that you want click down and it'll immediately make the back cover the exact same color you'll notice on the left hand side there's a text button and if you click on it you can select text that you can use to, to start adding text to the cover if you're scrolling through the text and you see a little crown, this is text that is only available in the pro trial version or with a pro account, but you could easily go through a lot of different options and just choose a free text to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that. You can take the text templates and make edits to it. So I'm gonna make some edits. I'm just gonna ungroup these. I get rid of this one. And then for this font, I'm just gonna change the size. And then to change the color, you can simply click on this text color button here and you're presented with a number of options. And then if you click on the three dots, you can duplicate it. And then you can go ahead and type in the next text. So you can just grab the corners and resize it. I think what I'll do to make the text stand out a bit more is I'll go to elements. I'll take a shape. And then I will change the color to darker color and I'll just 
line this up. And then I'll just change the transparency. There's a transparency button in the top here. And then I'll go ahead and I'll duplicate this. And then if you run into a situation where it's laying over the text itself, all you have to do is right click, go to layer, send back, and then it'll put it behind your text. Got the cover made. Most coloring books, what they will do is they will take sample images and they'll put them on the back of the cover and just put some very basic text. So I'm gonna do that very quickly and come back. So here we go, we've got the front cover, we've got the back cover done. We've laid out all of the images and all of the text and I've on the back cover, I've intentionally left some space here at the bottom because typically when you're uploading it to a place like Amazon KDP, you can get your own barcode or you can have them assign you a barcode and then when the images are uploaded, they will actually put the barcode on the back of the book so that's why I've left it blank and to download it you would do the exact same thing you would go to file you would go to download you would then change it again to PDF print and then choose RGB or CMYK depending on what your use case is if you're looking for even more on mid journey I've created a playlist that'll show you comparisons between other image creators such as dolly 3 stable diffusion and Leonardo AI Click on this playlist right here.